What are you doing over there? Hey, everybody. Where were you? Welcome back. <laughs> my guest tonight, my next guest, is a nine-time Grammy Award-winning singer and songwriter who has sold more than 50 million albums worldwide. She's now the subject of a documentary on Showtime called Cheryl. We would drink a bunch, and we'd go to the bookstore down the road, and we'd bought a poetry book by this man named Wynn Cooper. And there was a poem in it, first thing called Fun. It started off with, all I want to do is have a little fun before I die. And so we had this groove going that was somewhere between Steeler's Wheel and a Marvin Gaye track. And I picked up the poetry book and started just kind of free form. All I want to do is have a little fun before I die. There's a man next to me out of nowhere. And I just kind of acted out the poem. And then we put this hook in, all I want to do. And that became the song. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Cheryl Crow. So nice to see you again. Good to see you. There's so it's much to long. talk about. So much to talk about. Um, uh, first of all, thanks for being here last night. You played with Lucius. That was wonderful to so see you awesome. out there. Now, uh, let's get straight into this documentary. Cheryl, yeah. how, do you, how do you feel about a documentary being made about you? Because so much has already been written and said about Cheryl Crow. What... Do you, are you, are you resistant to it? I'm, I'm going to watch it, but are you, as the subject of it, ever resistant, um, resistant oh, to that? Oh, when they first came to me, Showtime, and my manager, and said, we think you should do a documentary, I was like, yes, I think we should after I'm dead. <laughs> I think it'd be a fantastic idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I did finally give in to it, because um, I don't think people realize that in, um, I mean, I'm... I've got my ARP card. I don't know if you know that. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Congratulations. So, um, you can get discount movie tickets with that. I could actually go see my own documentary for cheaper. Wow. However, it's not in movie theaters. But, I, you know, I do have a, a, about 40 years of music life, but there's a ton of living mm -hmm. that goes into making an artist want to stick their neck out or sure. raise their voice into the fray. And so I, st I told all the stories. Well, let me ask you something that may not be a story in there. Mm -hmm. Let's ask a very basic story, kind of like an origin story. Okay. Why do you think you wanted to be a performing musician? Because I take that aside from like a composer or something. Why do, why do, why do you want to be out there with a guitar in your hand making I people... I want to be rich and famous. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I understand. No, no, that's, that's such an that easy way. Not... <laughs> such an easy way to get rich is what I hear. I'm getting ready to get a butt implant. No. Um... <laughs> that's coin, baby. That's coin. Yeah. Um... I grew up uh, in a real musical household. My mm -hmm. parents um, still Missouri. married, 66 years, oh, wow. in a tiny town called Kennett, like four stoplights, not close to anything. Mm -hmm. And albums were my way out. That was my ticket out. I'd lay under the piano and I would just study and pour over, you know, James Taylor, all the all the liners, Fleetwood Mac, Carol King. Now you've um, got to you've got to work with those people. Now, what's that like for you them. now to get to be able to work with people like? Uh, uh, Stevie Nicks and Bonnie Raitt and Mavis Staples, like those those heroes. It's, it's I'm still a fan, so I mean, even talking about it, I get embarrassed. But it's an, it's incredible, it really is. Now you must be that for a lot of people too. I'm sure you know you see that look in people's eyes when they get a chance to work with Sheryl Crow. Well, um, I, all I would say is that, like getting to play with Lucius last night mm. and getting to sing on their record, which Brandy produced, and getting to work with these young artists, man, that was. For me, that that's who I was. I was like, I couldn't wait to meet Stevie Nicks and then to get to know her and, and to know how generous she is and amazing. And Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones, all these people that were such a huge influence for me. I mean, even Smokey Robinson. I mean, people that I've gotten to stand next to, Burt Bacharach, wow. people that have mattered to me so much. Um, I, I can't even explain it. Do you, you have two boys? I do. Uh, Wyatt and Levi. Yes. 11 and 14, I understand. Y'all better be in bed. It's a school night. Now, do they, 
Do they are like my mom, Cheryl Crow? Do they listen to your music? Like, are they like all I want to do is have some fun or soak up the sun seriously? or Steve McQueen or seriously? These are really good songs. No, Every day is a winding like road. Kid, Come on. They're like into Kid Leroy and um, who, I'm sorry, I don't even know who that is. Um, but <laughs> they're into like pop, popular music, sure. and I'm like the police. Yeah, I'm the person that says. Not the police, not the band, the police. Not the band You're like police. the cops. No, I'm the okay. cop. Yeah, I'm like the person that says, I, that is not a nice song. Do you know what, that, what they're talking about? <laughs> I am, yeah. There's no, no lyrics in any of your songs that you would pull yourself over for? Well, they don't listen to me. So, I mean, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> they're like, Mom, you know you were born in the 1870s. And Do I'm you have like, a favorite yeah. song of Cheryl Crow's? Um, I do, actually. And uh, I'm not just pumping this. Um, this new album is coming out, but I wrote a song called Forever, mm -hmm. and it's, I think it may be out now, or it's coming out on May 6th, I don't know, they don't tell me anything, but um, my they kids are... They don't tell you when your album is released? <laughs> I think it's coming out May 6th, but my kids are in the video, but it's about, it was written for my kids, and That's written nice. for my 15-year-old, talking about stress and how kids are so stressed out now. What was the, the okay, so every, uh, you know, All I Want to Do is Have Some Fun, mm -hmm. uh, what's the name of the song? Is it All I Want to Do is Have Some Fun? All right? I Want to Do. All I Want to Do, okay. Mm -hmm. so, that hits, and it becomes not like, oh, yeah, that's a good song. Sheryl Crow becomes huge. It's such an enormous hit, and everyone's like, who is this girl doing this song? What was that moment like when that, that, that switch lands, where you work for so long to try to figure out how are you going to break in, what is your sound, how do you connect with an audience or a commercial audience, and then it happens. Yeah. And, then, and there are very few people for whom it happens like a light switch like that. What was that moment like? Um, it was, I mean, it should have been euphoric, but at that time... Um, there was so much debate about whether I had even uh, written my own songs, and uh, it, you know, the, what do you mean? The, Why, the lore from? was that a bunch of guys wrote my first album, and so by the time that took off, um, you know, that was already swirling around. Um, but I will say one thing: when it really hit, um, the Grammys put me on the map because the Grammys back then, everybody watched it, and you sold. You sold records from that show, you know, and it put you on the map. And it was a, a, a real moment, but it, it definitely was, it was a mixed bag. It was, it was hard. Well, my favorite Grammy memory of all time, and yes, I have Grammy memories, but is, <laughs> is the night before, the Clive Davis yes. uh, party that's yeah. traditionally the night before. Yeah. Did you go to the Clive party? You go to the yeah. party. It's fun, yeah. isn't it? It's, nice. really, party. it's, good it's time. really fun. Everybody's there. Yeah. Talking yeah. about people who blow up at the Grammys right over there. Yeah, look at yes. but, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> It's my first time out there. My first time out there. I'm just nominated for like a comedy album. Still. And, and but Clive Davis gets up there with the big glasses and the head, and he goes, "We got a wonderful artist here tonight. Uh, she's amazing. All she wants to do is have some fun. Cheryl Crow is here tonight. She's amazing." And he does the whole room. Barbara Streisand, the greatest voice of a generation. Barbara, Barbara, please stand up. And people just kind of do this. Thank you very much. And I got to sit. Where am I going to sit? Am I going there with my 14-year-old daughter? I get to sit with Cheryl Crow. You and I, that's... It's in the documentary. Is that the first time no, we met? Is that the first, I think that's the first time we met. Was it right was the there. first time we met, We're yes. sitting right there, and you yeah. were so nice to my 14-year-old daughter, yeah. and bon, John Bon Jovi was sitting on the side of you, and over here on the other side of my daughter was Richie Sambura. Oh, my gosh. Who, and you know, and we live in New Jersey, and she used to say my first prom date was Richie Sambura because he was wearing a tux, and she was wearing a little blue dress. Oh, did you get a sweet. picture of the two of them? I yes, know. I do. Okay, it's good. very creepy. <laughs> Well, Cheryl, it's really lovely to see you. Thanks Thank for being you. here. It's Thanks for being here last you. night and tonight and any time. My pleasure. Lovely. Lovely as always. The documentary Cheryl airs Friday on Showtime. Cheryl Crow, everybody. We'll be right back.